Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be looking at BFA healers and ranking them in terms of which one's the easiest to pick up, which one I can learn the rotation fastest and do relatively well in a new raid, in a new dungeon. So this ranking is going to be looking at healers and healer changes that happen in BFA. Now keep in mind that I'm going to be grouping healers in two different categories in terms of reactive healers and proactive healers. Reactive healer is a type of healer that when there's damage coming out, when you see someone dipping low, you'll just heal them. You'll just heal them and make sure to, you know, get that meter soap and things like that. As a proactive healer, you need to know in advance when the damage comes out. You need to prepare for the damage, which in turn means you need to know the boss fight, which again means you need to know the damage patterns. You need to know when to use your cooldowns, you need to prepare for it. So as a new player, it's almost always going to be easier to play a reactive healer because you can play a reactive healer. You don't need to know the, do uh, the boss damage patterns you can just heal when the damage comes out and you need to consider that and also you need to consider that a lot of the healing classes here are relatively easy to pick up and play but the fact is that you will have to invest a lot of time in order to really master each spec so ranking from easiest to hardest i'm going to be talking about holy priest holy priest was relatively easy to play in legion and there hasn't been that many changes happening in bfa a lot of people will tell you that there's been a relatively dumbing down of the spec because all of a sudden your artifact is not there, all of a sudden talents like Divinity, which again, are not, will not make your gameplay way harder. They're not that crazy of talents or spells, but they're kind of nice bonuses that you could really optimize the longer you played Holy Priest. Those are no longer there. The fact is that you gained Symbol of Hope as a baseline, you gained a talented raid cooldown through Holy World Salvation, all the other talents are relatively passive, they don't really change your gameplay that much, which in turn makes Holy Priest a great, great healer to pick up as a new player, as a new player who's coming into healing. The rotation is relatively simple, using your Holy Ward spells, maintaining Prayer of Mending, then using Flash Heal or Prayer of Healing based on a situation, based on a niche situation, and that's about it. Even the fact that Renew has been changed in BFA, and it's still is not a good spell to use and a lot of people will tell you to either never use it or maybe use it in specific specific niche scenarios with their movement because holy priest does suffer from movement but overall holy priest is looking relatively unchanged in many eyes simplified version simplified legion version now the second easiest healer in my eyes coming from bfa changes is holy paladin now holy paladin again not that many changes happen the biggest issue or the biggest change that happened to holy paladins in terms of gameplay is their aura of sacrifice aura of sacrifice was one of my favorite cooldowns in legion it, it had a skill cap you know that once you used aura of sacrifice you need you needed to get effective healing that means you need to actually heal someone and you would usually combine it with some other cooldown and then you would you could produce really really good numbers and there was definitely a difference between a holy paladin who was kind of slow and a holy paladin who could really make use of that aura of sacrifice and in turn, Legion, Holy Paladin, a lot of the power came from cooldowns. In BFA, you no longer have Tears Deliverance, your Aura of Sacrifice or your Aura Mastery, no matter whether you're using Aura of Sacrifice, using Devotion Aura or using Aura of Mercy, it's not a gameplay engaging cooldown. You're just going to press your Aura Mastery and you go about your business as usual. And like I mentioned, you don't have as many cooldowns anymore. Tears Deliverance is no longer there. So the gameplay is relatively simple your cooldowns are easier to manage and the gameplay like i mentioned before holy shock light of dawn and then your fillers holy light flash of light depending on your situation depending on your mana depending on whether you have infusion of light procs and it really isn't that difficult to pick up as well keep in mind that i'm providing a simplified overview of each healer's rotation i don't really want to go into every aspect of the healer's spell priority because it would take too long have to consider that as well but let's move on to the next healer and the next healer is a reactive healer we covered holy paladin and holy priest which are again reactive healers so let's look at restoration shaman restoration shaman like i mentioned reactive healing reactive healing is usually easier than proactive healing and rest of shaman changes have been very significant in terms of bfa rotation bfa simplicity basically so Legion, Resto Shaman with Cloudburst, with Ancestral Guidance, with Ascendance, with Valence, with 
artifact ability was probably one of the most difficult or at least the second most difficult healing class to play in my personal opinion because you could have such you could optimize your cloud burst to an extent that cloud burst could be so so strong now in bfa cloud burst has been hasn't really changed it replaces healing stream totem but besides that everything's the same and with echoes of the element if you actually spec into echoes of the element you can get two cloud burst totems so technically if you do spec into echoes of the element you get two cloud bursts your uptime of cloud bursts is much higher so it's relatively harder to mess up your timings again it becomes easier another fact cloud burst is kind of no longer the go-to spell in raids there's a lot of different other talents that are being considered by a lot of the resto shamans when coming into bfa or at least when coming into pre-patch so all of a sudden you might not even play with cloud burst half the time and the gameplay is relatively simplified without cloud burst it becomes kind of like generating tidal waves through riptide or chain heal making sure that your healing rain is down making sure that you're using healing stream totem um and then basically using your tidal waves through healing surge or healing wave depending on what type of healing you need depending how your mana is doing so it's really not that hard you kind of need to you know you need to identify clumped up areas you'll be optimized in boss fights so there is a lot of stacking and the rotation is really not that hard generate tidal waves use tidal waves maintain healing rain maintain your little cooldowns or at least some of the complexity that comes from resto shamans is the abundance of utility cooldowns the abundance of healing cooldowns resto shamans have good usage of those cooldowns could mean whether the raid is going to live or whether the raid is going to die so now let's look at our first proactive healer and that is restoration druid now restoration druid in legion in my opinion was probably one of the easiest healers to get into because a lot of the power came from rejuvenation rejuvenation was the number one heal it was extremely extremely powerful the synergy that rejuvenation had with all the other spells artifact traits was just insane it was just insane and the biggest changes happening in bfa rejuvenation is now 15 seconds in legion and in the legion pre-patch you probably won't notice that much of a difference because in pre-patch most of the rest of Jews will be using legendary shoulders and rejuvenation will last much longer before the pre-patch you also had artifact traits that increase rejuvenation duration and it wasn't uncommon for rest of Jew to almost mindlessly place rejuvenations on the whole raid you'll be able to do that your master will stack up and rejuvenation and when i say proactive healing proactive healing wasn't really being applied to a legion druid because you could just maintain reduce on everyone in bfa 15 seconds is a substantial hit to reduce duration it's going to mean that you're going to you're going to have to be much more selective in terms of what players are going to get rejuvenation you'll need to know when the damage is happening because flourish and tranquility are a very very important part of your gameplay right now you'll you'll be surprised by the amount of healing that flourish accounts for because flourish has been kind of you know merged into essence of Ganeer. so all of a sudden if you kind of mess up your flourish or if you mess up your tranquility your healing will really really suffer and also the fact that tranquility you cannot cast on the move makes it a bit harder so more selective rejuves cooldowns providing more healing or being bigger part of your healing meaning that messing up cooldowns not knowing when the damage comes out is a big deal I've, I even forgot to mention that Inner Peace build is a thing right now. Inner Peace reduces the Tranquility cooldown to 2 minutes, which means that if you want to use Inner Peace, you really need to know the damage. You really need to know the boss land. You need to know when you can actually optimize the Tranquility usages. You need to even ask your Raid Leader that, hey, Mr. Raid Leader, I, I have Inner Peace. I should really be using Tranquility first because I can get it back up at that, at that moment, at that specific boss moment. So deep knowledge of the boss is required. Now, I might have been a little bit generous about placing Miss Weaver Monks as the second hardest healer in BFA, mainly because Miss Weavers can be considered a reactive healer, even though they received two charges of Renewing Mist. Renewing Mist is still advised to be used relatively on cooldown. It is a smart heal, or at least it's a smart hot that jumps to targets that need healing, so you just press it and you just let it go in the raid frames. Relatively easy to use. But you have to consider that Miss Weavers are the healers that received the most changes in BFA. They received at least two new viable raid builds, which are very, very different in terms of what they achieve. So all of a sudden you have this tank sitting build, which I think is the easier of the two. 
especially when considering for, when considering for new players. The tank sync build relies on Soothing Mist, it relies on using Essence Font when there is a lot of raid damage, Essence Font becomes stronger with talents like Upwelling, you need to use Vivify when certain amount of targets take damage, but it's all based about making sure your tank stays up, Soothing Mist is rolling and dealing with tank spikes and raid AoE spikes appropriately. Again, I don't consider this build to be relatively difficult. Now, the next build, Fist Weaving build. Now, Fist Weaving was a thing in Legion, but now in BFA, it's a lot more rewarding through talents like Rising Mist, which basically every time you use Rising Sun Kick, it's going to heal the people which are hot and extend those hots on them. And it's advised to be using Rising Sun Kick after you use Essence Font, because Essence Font places a lot of hots on everyone. But either way, this build requires you to go to melee. And you know, if you played the Mistweaver before, you know that Rising Sun Kick can be reset by two ways. You can reset the Rising Sun Kick by using Tunda Focus T, which has been modified in BFA, or you can reset Rising Sun Kick through the Tiger Palm slash Blackout Kick combo. If you look at teachings of the monastery, you'll notice that Tiger Palm will cause Blackout Kick to strike additional time, which can stack up three times. Blackout Kick in itself has a 15% chance to reset Rising Sun Kick, so all of a sudden you have this 1-2 combo that can, that can reset your Rising Sun Kick. And this can be optimized in so many ways. You also have to make sure to not try to reset Rising Sun Kick when he has like 1 or 2 seconds left. So you have to pay attention to this little melee combo build. On top of the fact that you also have to pay attention to your raid frames. You need to make sure that if there's raid damage happening, you need to make sure to use your Essence Font, your Vivifies, your Enrune Mist accordingly. So all of a sudden, the Fist Weaving build might not suit the new players or might not suit players who are not great at multitasking, looking at the melee rotation, looking at the raid frames and things like that. So this is the reason why I placed Mistweavers as the second hardest healers in BFA. And now let's look at the hardest healer in BFA. And two expansions in a row, I'm going to put Discipline Priest here. And Discipline Priest has been somewhat simplified in BFA. You'll notice that some of the changes are going to be more new player friendly, but still. This priest, bread and butter, atonement, making sure you know when to place your atonements, making sure you prepare for those burst moments during the boss progression is key. So if you don't know the fight, if you don't know when the damage comes out, you should not be playing Discipline Priest. Just that, that's just my advice. You need to know the damage, you need to know the boss beforehand if you want to play Discipline Priest effectively. Now in BFA, Plea has been completely removed and replaced by Power Word Shield, which did not affect the gameplay that much. The fact that Light's Wrath has been removed, meaning that there is one less of a cooldown to pay attention to. I mean, in Legion, a good Discipline Priest would really, would really take advantage of Light's Wrath and get some really good healing out of it. That's no longer there, so you can say that this is a little bit simpler now. You can also look at Ray talents that are, are looking really strong, things like Contrition, which means you can use a Penance defensively. By defensively, I mean you can use a Penance to heal somebody, which gives you more breathing room as a Discipline Priest in case maybe you're not in the range of the boss. Maybe the boss is not there. Maybe there's no adds to hit. You can use your Penance defensively. You can get good healing out of it. And like I said, more breathing room to play as a Disc. So you have these quality of life improvements. You also have Rapture, which is on 1.5 minute cooldown, which increases your power of shield immensely and the fact that if you get something like external innovate to give you haste and things like that you can really push out a lot of you can push out a lot of shields onto your raid or party party group but again you need to know you need to do that before the damage comes out you need to know the boss patterns you need to know when the damage isn't coming so that's why i placed this mid priest as the hardest healer because it is quintessential proactive healer in Legion and is quintessential proactive healer in BFA, even though it is somewhat simplified in my eyes at least. So this has been my overall ranking of BFA healer difficulty. Now quite a few healers could have shifted places. I would really love to hear your opinions about which healer you find the most difficult, at least if you pay attention to BFA changes, which healer you're most excited about. Uh, I would love to hear your opinions, please leave your comments below. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. It really helps the channel. It really allows me to keep continuing with videos like this. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in my next guide.